Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Try to move you closer, but slowly, so the tripod doesn't fall. It is currently about 10 till 6 on Wednesday evening, and I am currently uploading my drama video for the day, and um, my TV show video. I don't know what I'm going to call that channel. I think I'm going to call it Peter Watches TV. My Peter Watches TV video for the day, and my Peterisms video for the day, and now I'm vlogging. And those are the videos that I made today. I woke up today and I was still so tired when I woke up. Uh, I slept so deep last night. I had the weirdest dreams. Um, I woke up today and I was still so tired when I woke up. And I was like, maybe I will just vlog today. Maybe I won't film any other videos. And then I took Boo Radley out and um, had a little cup of coffee. Well, started having a cup of coffee. So I have two cups of coffee out here right now. This is a cup of coffee that I made several hours ago that I'm still finishing. This is the Bones French Toast coffee. And then um, I got some iced coffee as well, just now, so I could have both of these out here while I'm talking to y'all. So anyway, I got Boo settled, took him outside, got him settled, got him some treats and stuff like that. And then I was like, you know what? I think I am gonna film some videos today. Um, and so I, cause I was kind of convincing myself. I was like, well, if Caroline had come picked me up, then I would be gone on Cousin Fun Day today and I probably wouldn't film that many videos anyway. So, I, actually, I was very relaxed. <laughs> so I filmed my drama video, and then as it was like rendering, I like got my mail, took Boo out again, stuff like that. Then um, I, that was while it was uh, getting off the memory card, and then I rendered it, and then I filmed my Peterisms video, and then I started uploading it, or rendering it and uploading it, and then I started my um, Peter Watches TV video, which is about Unlocked, because I finished that show last night. And um, then Alex just came home, and I'm uploading all three of those videos right now, and I was like, I'm gonna go outside and vlog for a little bit. Probably not super long tonight, though. It's nice today. It's supposed to be, I think tomorrow it's supposed to be 70 or 78, and then on Friday it's supposed to drop and get like real cold again. So we turned on our air conditioning because it was getting really warm inside. So we turned on our air conditioning to like 68. Um, the upstairs was really warm, so we had to turn it on. And I have a feeling I'm gonna have to turn the heat on by this weekend. <laughs> this spring weather in Indianapolis makes no sense whatsoever. Um, it did rain last night. Boo Radley was absolutely, well, I guess early this morning it started pouring down rain. Late last night and early this morning, but early this morning Boo was terrified. He was like scared to death. And it's always interesting because when Alex comes home, like from the moment that Alex comes home, Boo Radley follows Alex around. But when like people come to our house and Alex or Boo Radley gets very scared when people come over to our house, he always comes to me. And then when it storms, he never goes to Alex. He always comes to me. And the storms woke Alex up because it was like lightning and thundering. It was like really bad storms. And um, Boo like comes over to me, he comes on my chest and like crawls all up my, he gets really scared. And Alex was like petting him and he was like, he's just really, really scared. And I was like, I know. Sometimes when I take Boo out <coughs> while it's storming, it's so funny. I think I've talked about this on here before. Like if he goes outside when it's storming, like the storm doesn't bother him out. But inside, I don't think he understands like the sounds and the way that it makes his little body, I mean, his little body shakes like this. Um, we've tried the thunder jackets. We've tried all the other stuff that, you know, people have recommended and sent and stuff like that. Nothing works. Nothing works for Boo. He's like terrified of the storm. So the sun just came out from under a cloud. So um, I took him outside, I brought him inside. You know, he was real excited out, you know. <laughs> the rain had stopped for a second and it was just like thundering lightning. And so he was running around and then I got him inside, got him treats and got him back into bed and then the storm started up again. And But he finally fell asleep and he was fine. Um, but I had the weirdest dreams last night. I had this dream. The more I thought about it when I woke up, it kind of like really freaked me out because I had this dream that I was talking to this kid, but I knew the kid was me, and it was me when I was four. I don't know why, I, I asked him in the dream, I was like, how old are you? Like, I knew it was me, but as a kid, and I was like, somehow I had gone back in time, and I knew that I had gone back in time, and I was like, visiting my mom and myself, but they didn't know I was myself grown up, if that makes sense, it was such a bizarre dream. And I was in the house I grew up in, and. I'm gonna say he, cause it, but it was me. He was showing me like his room and stuff like that. And I was like, how old are you? And he was like, I'm four. And um, I was asking him all these questions and I was like, 
how's your Aunt Kathy? And he was like, my Aunt Kathy's really good. How do you know my Aunt Kathy? And I was like, oh, I just, I've known your Aunt Kathy for a long time. And I was like, how's your Uncle Dave? And I was asking him, like, how, like, his, uh, dog was at the time and stuff like that. When I woke up, what was so weird about the dream was that, um, and I was, like, looking out the windows that I grew up in, like, my childhood bedroom. Maybe that was what, why I had the dream, because I kept on thinking about that last night when I was laying in bed with the storms, that I can remember the storms when I was growing up. I had, like, these bunk beds, and I would lay in the bunk, like, I always slept in the bottom bunk, and I would lay there, and I would, like, look at the storms. I was never really that afraid of storms when I was a kid. I kind of, like, loved storms, but I can remember, like, in the spring, I would open the windows. My mom would open the windows in the spring and the summer to let all the air in and cool the house down. And our house is like back into woods and we had a creek behind our house. And so when this, when it stormed, you could really smell like the woods and the creek and stuff like that. And I can remember like smelling it. In my dream, I went right up to the window and I like smelled, closed my eyes and smelled the window. But when I woke up, it was so weird to me. I don't know why. I was like thinking about this dream. I actually even like wrote it down. Um, about like what I was like asking in the dream and stuff like that. Cause I was like, firing him all these questions and asking him all these questions and there's all these questions about people and one of the things I realized when I woke up so he asked me well I asked myself but he asked me like right before I left he was like standing my my mom and him were standing by the front door as I, it's so weird to say him when it was me but we're standing by the front door as I was walking out and they were like holding hands and he said something like are you are you gonna be there when everybody gets there. And I like turned back and I was like, what? And then I woke up. It was so weird. And what I realized when I was like thinking about the dream, I couldn't go to sleep, like fall right back asleep after I had the dream. And what I kept on thinking of was that like every person that I asked him about in my dream, like my Aunt Kathy, the dog that I had when I was growing up, um, my mom, well, she was there in the dream. And I was asking her, like, questions, too. Like, how have you been? And, but it wasn't, like, in my dream I knew that she was dead. It was, like, I was asking her, like, as if I had just seen her, like, a month ago. I was, like, well, how have you been? And she was, like, I've been good. Yeah, things are going. I'm, like, have you been busy? And she was, like, yeah. And she was, like, I'm, you know, doing this. I've been doing a lot of reading. And I was, like, what are you reading? And she was, like, oh, all kinds of things. And she was telling me about some book that she was reading that I'd never heard of before. And... She's like, I like, listen to this whole new kind of the music that I like. And it was so weird. And, but I realized when I woke up that like every person I asked him about were dead. Like they had all died. Like I didn't ask him anything about like, how's Caroline or anything like that. Like every person I asked him about, because I asked about like friends of my mom's and stuff like that. And he would always ask me, he'd be like, how do you know them? And I would say, oh, I've just like, I've been friends with them for a long time because I know your mom. And... He was like, oh, they're good. But, like, I noticed when I woke up that, like, every person that I asked about was somebody that had died. It was, like, really, really weird. I have this weird thing. I'm, like, in my head, like, do I want to share this or not? Because this is going to sound so strange. But this is actually something I've, like, brought up in therapy a couple times we've worked on. It typically happens late at night. I mean, it's when I'm very, very aware of like what's going, like that this is all real and you know, all this kind of stuff. But it's like when it's very like late at night and I'll be sitting out here and like reading or whatever. And I have this thought like, like maybe I didn't survive the crash. Like maybe this is the afterlife. And, um, cause I have no recollection, you know, from, right before it happened to five days after. I have no memory of it whatsoever. And it was interesting because I was talking to Tanya the other day and she was telling me about, she was there when my dad was there at the hospital. And it was the day after I had found out about the accident that Alex had told me. So it would have been the sixth day. And she was there at the same time that my dad was. And my dad was, I was asking my dad, like I wanted to turn over and sleep on my stomach, but I was, had the, I was, you know, in the, the, the body brace thing. And Tony was like, he can't, he can't turn over. And my dad was like starting to like almost cry because, and she was like, she was like, Peter, it's just so bizarre. And she said, you just like, then all of a sudden she's like, you just had this 
realization when your dad was there. Like, you, she was like, I remember you looking at your dad and you started telling your dad like he didn't know anything about it, like about the accident. You were just like sobbing and sobbing and that she was like, you kept on just saying over and over and over again that like somebody died and you know, and like you didn't know. And she was like, it's just, she was like, it was so hard to sit there and watch it. And she was like, cause you could tell that you couldn't really, even in that moment, like conceptualize like what was going on. And I don't know, it was weird having that dream last night. Does that mean something? I don't think I've ever dreamed about myself. Maybe I have. I probably talked about it on here if I have. But I don't know that. I mean, I've dreamed a lot about my childhood home. I've dreamed a lot about my mom and my childhood home. I don't know that I've ever dreamed about myself, like talking to myself as a kid. And it was, and I knew it was me. And it was so weird because it was at like this stage in my life. Like I was talking. I don't rem I mean, obviously, I don't remember four. We didn't even live in that house when I was four. We didn't move into that house until I was five, I don't think. I have this picture that, like, my mom or dad took of me, and it was when we lived in the apartment before we moved into our house. And I used to have one of those dolls that was called uh, Baby Alive. Do you guys remember those dolls? I've mentioned on it here before, where you feed it and then it would poop. Which it really didn't poop. It just, like, the food just went down, like, through a tube and then came out the other end. But... I have this picture of me and I'm like standing in the woods where like all the kids would play around this like apartment complex and I'm like in shorts and a t-shirt and I'm holding like this baby doll and like her hair is like all like messed up and and like in the picture like you can tell I've been playing like in the dirt and stuff like that like I have some of it on my face and like in the dream I like had dirt on my face like as a kid um because I kept on noticing that in my dream I was like like, I had all this dirt, like, on my face. And it, it reminds me of that picture. I don't know. The dream was just really weird. I haven't seen that picture. I don't even know where it's at. It used to be in the living room. And then I, like, took it down and I put it in this basket in the basement. So, I don't know. It's like, uh, my mom had it. She had it, like, in this frame in the living room. And I think I took it downstairs a while ago. It's just really weird. I don't know why I had that dream last night. Then I had another dream. And I think I wrote it down, too. But I didn't look at it today. And it was really weird, too. And it was, but, but it wasn't about that. It was about something completely different. I said all these weird dreams last night. Probably the storms and stuff. So yeah, so last night was Tuesday. Did we watch anything last night, Alex and I? Oh, we watched like three or four episodes of Schitt's Creek. That's like our thing now. Every night we're watching Schitt's Creek together. So we watched Schitt's Creek last night while we ate dinner. And he ate his leftover uh, Thai sushi house. And um, I ate some meals in the kitchen. I'm doing better this week. I'm not doing great, but I'm doing better on my health journey. I'm just really, I'm really hungry. Like, like every night, I don't know what's going on with this t-shirt. Keeps on like pulling over. Every night I get really, really hungry. I, I don't know, I mean, it's not like, and I'm not hungry for like any specific thing. I just find myself like hungry. Like I could eat anything. And the thing is, is that other than like the meals that I have in the freezer and like cans of soup and things like that, and I don't really have like, and um, what do you call it? Uh, the cottage cheese that I have that I got, I think it was last week or whatever. I, I don't have a ton of stuff to eat here. So then I find myself just like being like so hungry and I'm like, I'm like standing in the pantry. Like, is there anything that's like healthy that I could eat, but I'm hungry, right? Like I'm so, I'm so hungry at night and a couple nights I've messed up. Um, I mean, it hasn't been like 100% perfect, but I've done much better this week than I did last week. So I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the progress that I've made. And I'm hoping next week will be even better. You know, it's a learning, it's a learning curve. It's a learning process. Um, I think weirdly enough, the warm weather is helping me because like I, I want to feel like lighter and feel better and feel healthier this summer. Um, and so I think I feel like a little bit inspired because of that, so. So yeah, so we watched It's Creek and then I lay down for a little bit and then I got up. And when I got up, I started reading, okay, so I'm reading this graphic novel. I got it a while ago. I was gonna actually do this like haul of all these graphic novels. So I got it a while ago. It's called, it's book one of Hockey, Check Please. And it's by Ngozi, Ukazu. And apparently she wrote a book. I think she or he. I think it's, it feels like it's a she. It is a she. She wrote this. Okay, it says, 
She graduated from Yale University in 2013 with a degree in computing and the arts and went on to receive a master's degree in sequential art and comics. During her senior year at Yale, she first became interested in ice hockey while researching and writing a screen... Oh, she wrote a screenplay called Hardy, I guess? Is that like a movie? I don't know. She used her newfound knowledge of hockey to launch Check, Please in 2013 and it later went on to be the most funded web comics Kickstarter of all time. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so it's interesting. So it's about this kid and like he was like a figure skater in like high school or like growing up but he now plays hockey and I guess he played hockey in college or something but he's at this college and he's a freshman and he's playing college or he's playing high school so this is him <laughs> okay but then these are the players <laughs> they all look like they're 35 okay like this guy has like a mustache and beard and this is like he moves into like the hockey house it's called H-A-U-S like Lady Gaga's house and so He's really excited about... It. Okay, it's such adult humor. It's And I, I didn't think it would be at first. Oh, Rainbow Rowell. She said, charming, addictive, and genuinely romantic. Oh, I love Rainbow Rowell. That's so funny that she said that on here. Who else? Did anybody else? Oh, my God. Mackenzie Lee, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. She said, it's a shot of warm, pie-smelling happiness. Okay, so he likes to bake. So, like, as soon as he goes to this, like, frat house, which is, like, the hockey house... There's been nobody mowing or doing anything out here all day long. And the first second I come out here, like, they start doing this stuff. So, he goes this... First of all, he doesn't want to be checked. Like, he doesn't want, like, anybody, like, you know, check him like you do in hockey. So, he's, like, afraid of hockey. And so, he does all these spins and twirls to, like, get away from them. And, like, the coaches are confused about it. And so... He goes this... Moves into this hockey house, the frat house. And the first thing he does is go into the kitchen. And he's like, what do I have here to bake with? And he opens the counter. It's so funny. There's like this picture and it's all sriracha. <laughs> Where is it at? Here it is. The picture's all sriracha. And then, and these guys are all talking about like, you can get like how booze you're going to get and how many like chicks you're going to get. <laughs> like all this. I mean, it's very adult. It's not what I expected at all. The language, it is like, I mean, I'm literally not even that far into it and the language is so foul and I'm just like, okay, this is not what I thought it would be at all. But it's really good. It's really quick read because the chapters are really short. Like here's like chapter five and then you turn the page and it's like, oh wait, hold a second. I guess it's not that short. You turn the page and then it's like one, two and then chapter six. So it's real easy to read. This is why, these are like graphic, this is what I mean by graphic novels, like cartoons. So I guess this is more of the, I guess you would call it the, but this is a series. There's a series of them, which is why I wanted to read a series of these. But I think I'm going to start the graphic. I think I'm going to start the, uh, and then I was reading Talbot Street and, um, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, the, the About Ed book too. I think I'm going to read, um, the, when I finish The Walking Dead all the way through, I think I'm gonna start, um, hey, how are you? I think I'm gonna start, oh my God, this woman has this huge brim. It's, it's, it's husband and wife that walk every night. They're so sweet. They're literally probably, I bet, I bet they're close to 90. And she used to always wear this like long skirt. Whenever I would talk about her, she doesn't ever wear it anymore. But he's the one that Caroline was talking to and she asked how many, how much he walks and he said he walks five miles. And he's the one that like walk by and walk back again. I mean, he, I don't know how he plans it out. But now that I walk, I totally get it. Because sometimes I'll walk like down like a really short cul-de-sac like two times just to like, you know, make some time. So anyway, um, but they're really sweet. But anyway, she was huge. Like it was like one of those hats that comes up like this, but it was like sun hat. But it was like huge brimmed. It's not that sunny outside. So, but it reminded me of my mom's hat that she wore to Caroline's wedding. Do you know it's so weird? I still have not watched that videotape of Caroline's wedding that has my mom speaking at it. I was reading or watching something yesterday. And they were talking about one of the first things. Oh, I know what it was. I was going to watch that. 9-11 thing the other night about the phone calls that they received and that w the woman at the in the trailer at the beginning I think I started watching it. I was like two or three minutes into it. And I was like, I can't this is gonna be too sad And she said People always tell you that one of the first things that you forget is their voice when people pass away Which is so true like you do. I think one of the hardest things for me through the years are I mean, and it rarely happens now, but every once in a blue moon it'll happen. And it's always around movies. It's always like when the Oscar nominations come out or um, when um, 
you know, something happens and it's like a new movie comes out and like I like want to tell my mom about it or something. Like, oh, I was looking through like Tubi picking these movies out, you know, for, um, what do you call it? For, uh, the Friday night movies with Peter or whatever I'm going to call it. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. But anyway, and I like saw this movie. I was like, oh my God, I haven't thought about this movie in forever. And this was a movie that my mom and I loved. And like in that moment, I was like, oh, I want to, oh, it's that, it happens that quick. But back in the day, I can remember like literally like picking up my phone to call my mom and then like it would hit me as I picked up my phone like Sh she's not here anymore. Um, but that is like one of the things is that you do start forgetting their voice. I think it's weird because we've lived here now. We've been together over 15 years, 15 and a half years. So we've lived here about 15 years. And um, every once in a while... They say that spirits, you can sometimes smell them and whatever. I don't know if there's any truth to that. But every once in a while, I can smell my mom in the house. But I do think that's probably just because of, like, living in the same place that she lived. Um, it's so funny, though, because, like, when people will come over, they'll say, oh, my God, this, like, your house has such... People always notice smell about me, cologne. Like, they always notice, like, my cologne. And and it's usually either Creed or um, Louis Vuitton. They, they don't say like, what is that cologne? They'll say, oh my God, it smells like Peter. That's what they always say. And then our house, when people come over here, I mean, for years they've said this, they've, they're like, your house always smells like Peter and Alex. And like when like, I have this one friend, like when she hugs me when I see her, she's like, oh, she's always like, oh my God, you smell, just like, you smell like your house, like you smell like Peter and Alex. And people always say that, like our house smells like Peter and Alex. I don't know what that means, but they say it smells good, like candles and all this kind of stuff. So. Um, and cologne and whatever, but so it's weird. Like every once in a while, like I walk and be like, "Oh, like th that reminds me of my mom." Caroline's house. Every once in a while, and my aunt never even lived there. Reminds me of my aunt's perfume. Like I'll smell my aunt's perfume every once in a while there, which is kind of bizarre. Because Caroline, well, she just recently David bought her some of my aunt. She used to wear like Chanel number no. five, I think. But and I bought her some for Christmas and the year before that. But this is like years ago before she ever wore my aunt Kathy's perfume that I would sm I like, smell my aunt every once in a while in the house, which is weird. Um, and it was like this potpourri smell that I associated with her house. Do you sm associate smells with people's houses? Like good smells, not like bad smells. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to say I've never been in a house that I associate with a bad smell, but I don't really think of people that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like most people that I know, like, well, Tanya's house doesn't really have a smell to it. I mean, that I associate with her, I think of. Melissa and Jason's, their house doesn't really have a smell. Who else do I get over to regularly that I would think? Oh, my sponsor. Her, so she loves this one candle from Bath and Body Works. I can't remember. It's something beachy. Um, it's like Madagascar or something. What is it called? Or Teak, teak something? Her hot, whole house smells like that. She's got the plug-ins everything. I always think of that when I smell her house. Whenever I smell that smell, I always think of her. Who else do I go over to? Oh, Alex's mom. She's a very, like, she's this perfume that she's worn ever since I've known her. And she's, and I've bought her perfume. At, like, this perfume always reminds me of her. Her house smells like that. She's somebody that has, like, it reminds me of my Aunt Kathy. Like, this very, like, homey smell to it that you always associate with that person, you know? I think we're going to see um, Alex's mom this weekend, maybe. So, yeah. So, um, anyway, I was reading that last night. And I was reading that earlier today, too, or trying to read some of it earlier today, but um, got up from my nap last night, and then I was like, I'm going to watch Unlocked, finish it. So I watched the last, when I got all settled and was doing laundry and stuff like that, I washed the blanket that was like the blanket on top of our comforter on our bed, and I forgot to put it in the dryer yesterday. And so I got into bed to take the nap last night, and I was like, oh, I don't want to go down the basement and put it in the dryer. And I was like, and I totally forgot to put it in the dryer, and it wasn't dry. So I pulled this white blanket of my mom's out of the closet. Alex is like, you have 10,000 blankets in there. You've bought so many sheets and blankets, you, you don't need that blanket. Blanket. I was like, I know, but it's so cozy, and Boo likes it. He's like, Boo doesn't know the difference. I was like, yes, Boo does know the difference. <laughs> so I put it in the dryer last night, so I'm going to put it on the bed tonight, because I put it warm, dry it last night, and then I uh, washed some more towels, so I have to dry, and uh, I have to fold the, well, everything's dry now, so I have to fold all the towels and put the blank blanket up there. But anyway, so last night I finished watching uh, Unlock, the last four episodes, did a video about it today. I loved it. I thought it was fantastically done. Um, and it was really binge-worthy if you're looking for a binge-worthy show. I like that they really went into, like, the history of the people and getting to know the people. And it wasn't just, like, 
I don't know, it's just like you got to know the people and you get to know more about them and, um, and see the human side of them. I really liked that. And then after that, I watched an episode and a half of The Walking Dead and then I started getting really tired and I went to bed. And it wasn't even really that late. And that was when I went to bed. And I think I was like laying there for just a little bit it was when it started like raining and pouring the first time. Maybe it stormed all night long and I just remember the beginning and early this morning, I don't know, but. Yeah, and today it's been super, super windy. I joked in my Peterism's video, I think, and called it like Pooh's Bluster, winning the Pooh's Blustery Day. I mean, it's been really that windy outside. It's been crazy windy. And um, I did not water my hostas because I knew it was, you know, raining. And I don't know if they got that, like this one hosta over here, it's like so big that it looks like it didn't get any, it didn't get wet at all around the ground over there. So I'm hoping the little ones do. This one over here, the little one that I was worried about, she looks like she's doing a little bit better. I just wish it would start growing and sprouting and becoming bigger. I want them to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So, um, so yeah, and then tomorrow, well, Alex just got home, so he's gonna relax tonight. We'll probably watch a little bit of Shit's Creek and stuff like that. Tomorrow, um, I have therapy. And then whatever videos I feel like filming. I keep on saying, I mean, I've said this for so long, there's not even a reason to bring it up on video, but I keep on thinking I'm gonna take a day off and then the day comes and I'm like, well, I might as well film some videos, you know? Um, so yeah, so, and then Friday we have a vet appointment with Boo Rally, his annual checkup, so. That's Friday. And then Saturday. Oh. We might have a dinner on Saturday night. So, Alex is gonna go over and hang out with his mom, I think, on Saturday afternoon. If I decide to make videos, then I won't go over there, because I think we're going to do something with her the following week with his aunt and uncle and grandma and stuff like that. So, that'll just kinda depend if that dinner is Saturday night or Friday. I can't remember if it's Friday or Saturday night. Well, I don't think the details are even confirmed yet about that. So, whenever we find out, those, that'll decide on how I do this weekend. Yeah, and then just re another relaxing weekend and getting some books done and stuff like that. I'm not getting that far. When I've been walking, I've been listening to music, so I haven't been getting that far. I've been listening to my audiobook a little bit, but I haven't been getting that far into Murder Road. Um, I've downloaded so much music. I downloaded a lot of like DJ music when we were in Miami. Like I've downloaded different versions of like Martin Garrix songs and David Guetta songs. And, um,. So I've been listening to a lot of that. And um, Purple Disco Machine, I've been listening to a lot of lately. Rufus to Soul. I wish it wasn't gonna get cold again the next couple days. And then even after that, it's supposed to just be like lower to mid 60s. This 70 weather has been nice. Like I'm sitting here right now in like these like camo sh sweat shorts. Gonna pull them out. <laughs> These camo sweatshorts and this t-shirt that I just pulled out of the closet. I was like, I need a t-shirt to wear. So I pulled out of the closet. But even this t-shirt, I have to tell you, like last summer was tied on me. I'm like, look, it's not tied on me at all. Um, so I pulled it out of the closet and put this one today. But like, it's cool. Like I could definitely like throw on, I was actually gonna grab a jacket. If I was just gonna sit out here and read, I would throw on a hoodie and I would be fine with shorts. And my legs don't ever really get that cold. Every once in a while, I mean like I'll put a blanket the other day when I was out here. But my legs don't, my feet definitely don't get cold. I always just am wearing like, you know, Birkenstock sandals, but unless it's cold, cold out here. And then I put on my Birkenstock clogs that have the, the faux fur in it. But my, my legs don't really ever get that cold out here. It's like my upper body that gets cold. So I'd probably just put a hoodie on. Those Abercrombie hoodies that I bought, oh my God, they are a little baggy, but they are so, so comfortable. They're so cute too. They're just like real basic. Um, I think for the fall, I'm not gonna buy any more. I've got enough hoodies now for the, for the spring and summer, but I've been wearing them like every single night. Cause since we turned the air on inside, it's kind of like cold. I still, I said I was gonna move out here and start watching shows out here, but I still haven't done that yet. I was gonna do it last night. I was gonna watch the last four episodes of Unlocked out here last night. Oh, well, it was raining. I, getting ready to rain. And so I was like, no, I don't want to bring everything out here. I'm like, to be honest with you, it's so weird because I did not love sitting in that chair and watching shows. I like to be in a more upright chair, and in that chair I find myself kind of like being like this. And so like that's why one of the reasons why I love sitting out here is because it's a more upright chair. Um, 
and I have like my area for like all my like you know stuff like my little drink and then my iPads right here and whatever um but I like really love sitting in that chair now <laughs> like I'm sure when it gets nicer like warm the camera stopped I'm sure when it gets warmer consistently like you know every night when it's like you know 70s I'll be out here more often but I was thinking the other night I was like I, last year at this time, I was definitely, well, last year at this time, I definitely was because it was right after I got out of the hospital with pancreatitis. I think I got out on like the 14th or something like that. I looked last year. I looked it up to see when I got out. I think it was the 14th. So I was definitely sitting out here last year. Um, but I can't remember the last time I sat out here to watch like a full TV show or a movie or something. Well, definitely not a movie. I haven't in a long time. I like sitting out here listening to audiobooks, but then I won't do that for very long, or music. Um, or I like to sit out here and read, but I won't, um, I don't know why, I don't like, I don't love sitting in that chair and reading. Watch, I'll be the next thing that changes <laughs> about me is I'll start sitting in that chair and reading, then I won't want to ever, well, I'm looking for a new chair. So I've been looking on um, like Wayfair and some other places for like, I want a big chair like, like it is, but I want a different material, and I want an ottoman, and the ottoman has to be big too, so. Like I said, I was going to wait until um, we got the house redone and whatever. I was actually talking to my neighbor the other day because the, well, I was talking to her yesterday about this. So her brother moved in this neighborhood and they bought this condo that's three down from me. They're the third one down from me and they bought it and they redid the entire thing. And um, she said their basement was unfinished and that they like had somebody come in and redo the whole thing and she said they were over there the other night and they watched this movie and they had this huge couch down there and stuff and their condo is the exact same as our condo and she was like their basement is so nice now and it was completely unfinished she was asking if we have a sump pump and stuff and I was like yeah we do and she was like yeah they put it like had this whole like walled it in like put this like cabinet or whatever and I was like oh and I was like asking her about the contractor and she was like the contractor that they use is somebody that they know, but they do mostly like professional contracting. They don't usually do residential stuff, but because of what they do, like they knew these people. And so they got to use them. They don't usually do residential contracting. She's like, I think that's why they like did a better job of like the drywall and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then I asked her about the condo next to hers, which was on the other side, which was, I think it's the same size as this too. There's like six in here. One, two, three four, five, six. You think there was like four or five. I think there's six, six or seven of like this unit. Um, that's like one car garage, one bedroom, all that kind of stuff. And she said the one next to her, which was the one that I had Caroline look at, um, she said it's beautiful inside. She was like, but you can tell that within a couple years it's going to start falling apart, which is so interesting because I didn't even say it to her until after she said that. I said, you know what's so funny? Because she knows Caroline from the pool. And she said... Or I said, yeah, Caroline looked at it and she said, I love what they did, but I wouldn't. But the only thing they did is that they took the kitchen and they moved the kitchen into where, like, the desk is, like, where the table is in our living room. They moved the kitchen from there to there and then they moved, made this, like, a sitting area. It's real, that part's weird. We wouldn't do that. We would keep the kitchen where it's at. But Caroline said when she saw it, she goes, it's beautiful. She goes, but you can tell that it's a real cheap contractor that used cheap materials. And she said... Because um, she said I would I would never use these materials and and redoing stuff and I was like why not? She goes because it'll fall apart in a couple years and that's exactly what she said. She said you can tell it's gonna fall apart in a couple years. She said but it's beautiful inside. But I like the idea of what they did, especially with the basement, because they put in all this cabinetry that looks like it just kind of like molds into the wall. Then you can open all these cabinets and whatever. And that's what I want in the basement is I want like like to move like from the wall like that side of the basement. You, well, you guys haven't seen the basement. The basement's the full length of the condo. And so, it's huge down the basement. And so, we have this one whole wall, and if we move the wall out, like, let's say two feet, and made that whole entire wall just all cabinetry, I mean, that would be fantastic. And then we could also, like, if you had cabinetry around it, and then put in, like, a TV, like a big screen TV, and then we could have the couch around that, and the other area could have, like, a little filming studio and whatever, and then we're gonna, like, build out a, um like a full bathroom down there with a shower and all that kind of stuff and then a laundry room. Well, the laundry room's already in the basement but we're going to have that all. That's how they did it. They turned it into two separate rooms or three separate rooms. They had the main room and then they had um, 
a bathroom that had like you know its own door that went in it, and then a laundry room and it's really cool how they did that and then this other place down there they did it very similar to that they must have probably looked at the blueprints for that because how they did it was very similar um so yeah and she was saying she was like well the only thing is that they can't sell it as a two bedroom i guess they turned that one they turned the basement into a bedroom and she said the only thing is you can't or the, no they put they it's two rooms there's just two rooms in the basement because like you could split ours up and make it like a great room and then like a bedroom and she said the only thing i guess i think that's what they did and she said the only thing is you can't you can't sell it as a two bedroom and i said because there's no window and she said yeah exactly because you have to I, I don't know if that's like just indiana or wherever but to call it a bedroom and it has to have like a window and like you know you have another way out or whatever and our basements don't have windows in them so you can't call it a second bedroom or something like that there's a reason why uh, and a private entrance or whatever and i said well we don't care because we're not planning on ever selling this place and so she was like oh so she's like you guys are lifers too and i was like we've talked about this before at the pool but anyway i can't wait for the pool to open i'm so excited about my days at the pool Look at me going from coffee to coffee. So yeah, relaxing night. Actually kind of like walking when it's windy. So tonight will be a nice walk. Put on my hoodie, probably put some sweatpants on too. When it was colder, I was walking in jeans. Put on my hoodie and uh, my AirPods and walk down the street and get it going. Get it going. It's a lot of people coming and going from the neighborhood right now. Well, I guess it's probably it's probably close to seven now. Where am I at on time? It's been like 36 minutes. I started this at like, what, 10 till six? It's about 6.30, something like that. Dinner time, people are probably leaving to go to dinner. Going to dinner time. I can't wait for my hostas to grow large. And then I have to figure out what we're going to do to the back patio. Alex just loves plants. He's not a big flower person. He just loves like big lush plants, big palm trees and leaves and stuff like that. So he that's what he always wants to do for the back patio. So we'll probably just do that, you know. <sighs> there was something else I wanted to tell you guys. No, I don't remember what it is. What's the other thing I wanted to tell you guys? Can't I remember? I need to at least finish this coffee because this one can stay in this container. I can put it in the fridge, but this one I have to at least finish. Sometimes I waste coffee. People are like, you can use those K pods twice or three times. I've tried to. I don't. I think it makes real weak coffee the second, even the second time you do it. But I'll use a K pod for coffee, and then, which, in all honesty, like most of the K pods that I buy are really not that expensive. So a cup of coffee costs between like a dollar and two dollars. When if you go to the gas station for the same amount of coffee you're you're paying like now it's like two ninety five or something like that. So um I saw that Speedway has K pods. I think I might get some of those actually. I think they sell them only there. I don't think you can get them online or maybe you probably can at speedway.com or something, but I don't think on Amazon they have them. But I like Speedway coffee. So I'm thinking about getting Speedway K pods. But anyway I'll make a cup of coffee, like, okay, so when we get done eating, we're watching Shit's Creek and whatever, like, I'll make a cup, or if we're watching, like, Vanderpump Rules or whatever, oh, we'll probably watch that tonight, too, Vanderpump Rules. I'll make, oh, is it Wednesday? Oh, Survivor Amazing Race, but I don't watch that till tomorrow. Um, I'll make a cup of coffee while we're sitting there, and then, like, I'll drink half of it, and then I pitch the rest of it, which is so funny, because I'll drink that, and then I fall asleep, like, right after that with my nap. But I'm like, you're wasting this coffee because you don't even drink half, you only drink half the cup. But I'm not gonna save it. My mom would save a cup of coffee and microwave it all throughout the day and it would be like instant. I'm like, mom, why are you saving this instant coffee throughout the day? So, um, but yeah, I waste a cup of coffee. So when I make a cup of coffee now, I'm trying to drink the whole cup of coffee so I don't waste it. But. I also don't wanna like, I'm down to like, I think two or three of the IHOP buttery syrup k-pods and i don't want to like keep on buying all this coffee online i find the ones i like, like the strawberry cream i've had like i think twice now 
it's okay. It's not it's not the great the greatest. The Green Mountain Honey Cinnamon, not the greatest. I wouldn't rebuy that again. The Cinnabon K pods, the Cinnabon cinnamon rolls, original cinnamon rolls or whatever, I would definitely buy that again. I'm going to buy that again. The IHOP. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I was like, I need to buy some more of that. I forgot the last time I bought it. I bought a box of like three big, huge things. I have got a huge box of that in the garage. I totally forgot about that. That was the last time. It was like, you like this so much, you're paying more to like buy a little individual box here and there. So I bought, I've got a lot more of that in the garage. The Bones French Toast, which is what this is. Because it's in the drawer, so it's easy to accessible. I'm like halfway through the box. Oh, there's a huge red cardinal over there. I love cardinals. Reminds me of my mom. Because I always say that my mom said she'd come back as a cardinal. Which then my dad said was hilarious because it's an Indiana State bird and they're everywhere. This is a huge cardinal over there. It's actually on the other side of the tr this bush that they have, so I can't see it right now. But I can see the end of its tail sticking right out. Um... The Bones coffee, I would order again, but I wouldn't get the French toast. It's not that the French toast is bad. I just, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. It just was okay. So I would try a different flavor. So if you guys like Bones coffee and you have a flavor suggestion, please put it in the comment section below. I would love to try it. It's a flavor that you like or like, oh my God, this is my fl favorite flavor. If you guys have a favorite K-Pod or favorite coffee, please put it in the comment section below. Oh my god, I have to tell you what I got last time. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> so, um, I was going through Instagram stories last night. I, like, some days, like, go through them, like, several times a day, and other times I don't go through them, like, for three or four days in a row, and I'm so glad I was last night, because I was going through them, and it's Thumbelina the Squirrel, and this rescue dog, you know, Morty the Misfit. I love him so much. Somebody sent me a, something about him, and then... Uh, all the, I love all the rescue dog stuff, but Reese's book club came up and I was like, and it was the bag and I was like, oh my God, does she have a new bag come out? So Reese has a new bag that's coming out in May and it's like the book club, like she has these box, it's expensive, it's $85, but you get the book and then whatever the book will be for May and then there's like all different kinds of stuff. There's like a lip gloss. There's like these non-alcoholic rosé drinks, which I will probably not drink and, and give to one of like Alex's girlfriends or something like that. But there's all this kind of stuff that I'm so excited about. And then you get the Reese bag and all that kind of stuff. Cause I bought one for Caroline and then I bought one for our friend. Alex ended up taking that to her a while ago. She was so excited about it. So I really wanted to get the holiday bag. Well, I thought they came out like every month. They don't, the Reese's book club subscription bag. It's a bag, you get a bag, like a, canvas bag like the Trader Joe's bags. It doesn't come out every month. I think this is like the Mother's Day bag. And I was like, oh, I'm buying this. So I got it last night. Well, oh, that's what I was doing for a while because I went through and so she has like this Mother's Day guide of all these gifts that you can get. And she has this, it's interesting like when you go through there, like there's this one thing that's like a wood thing and then it has the place where you put your coffee mug. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's like this. And then you put your book like over, like you hang your book on this part of the wood thing. And then it has a place where you put your reading glasses and coffee mug. Well, on the Reese's website, whatever she, it's called Unworthy Causes or whatever, Uncommon, Uncommon something. Whatever that brand is, it's like 50 some dollars on there. Well, I found it on Amazon because I was, this is a while ago, I was going to get it. I thought you'll never use it though, but I think I'm gonna get it anyway. They own like nicer ones for like $25. Well then she's got these throws, she's got all this stuff on there that's so expensive. And I'm like, I mean a lot of it is like sweaters for women, so obviously I'm not gonna get those. But a lot of the stuff is like, I want this stuff, so I just see it and I'm like, I want it so bad. She must make so much money off that stuff, right? And so I was like, they had this electric kettle and it was that brand Smeg, S-M-E-G, and they have like coffee makers. I love that brand so much. I think it's so cute. Well, I was like, surely she, and don't call me surely, she wouldn't have some really expensive electric water kettle hooked up, you know, named here. Cause like if we get our whole kitchen redone, then I'm gonna like, I wanna get like a nice appliances like that. Well, I went and looked, it was $199 for the, or $159 or $199 for the mini water kettle. That's not even, I love that brand cause it come, they have like this like mint blue and like they have the peach and black. I probably get black, but you know, 
but I love that brand. Does anybody have anything by that brand and love it? I would love to know if it really works or not. So anyway, but I, I'm not gonna get it because I was like, I, you already have electric kettle. You rarely ever use it unless you make tea. Tonight maybe I'll make some tea. It's a good tea night. That Lapsung tea that I bought that I had to have a while ago, and then I had like two cups of it, and then I was kind of over all that. <laughs> do you guys ever do that? I do that all the time. I gotta stay off the Prime. The Prime, I've gotta stay off of the Prime for a little while. Because I always find things I wanna buy. But anyway, so I was going through her whole thing. They had a lot of cute things on there. If like, you're ever looking for gifts for a friend that like loves books, she liked this necklace, and the necklace was like, the necklace was like, um, a library card, you know, in the back of the book. It was real cute. And then she had these hair tie things that were like bounds of books. I was like, Reese, you would never wear these, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but a lot of cute like bookish things and candles. Um, Caroline loved, it's Odell. I think it's, I don't know how you pronounce it, O-D-E-L-E. -E, but in the Christmas bag, subscription box I got Caroline there was dry shampoo in there and conditioner and she loved it she's she's like I'm gonna buy more of it she loved it and there was a candle in there they had like a nest candle I mean it's really like you get a, like what your money's worth for it I looked in the bag and then you get the book as well you get whatever the May book is for that so not sponsor but you guys know when it comes I'll be showing that on probably my Peter Dust stuff channel or my booktube channel so anyway <laughs> So anyway, all right, let me finish my coffee. All right, I'm gonna get off here now and I'm gonna go inside and see what Alex is up to. He's probably laying in bed like this, looking at TikToks. <laughs> and um, see what we're gonna do. Uh, oh, he's got leftovers, I think, still. He ordered a bunch of stuff from Thai Sushi House, so he'll probably be eating that. See what we're gonna do for dinner and shows and stuff tonight. I might take a little bit of a nap here in a little bit. So I'm gonna get off here, real short outro tonight. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye. Love you.